In the last video, we compiled some code to a DLL, and we referenced it, and we're able to execute that code, and all was well. It was pretty easy, and you probably thought, Jamie, you are making a big deal about nothing. We referenced, we reference assemblies, DLLs, EXEs, whatever. We reference them constantly, and and use them, and it works. So what's the big deal? Well, <clears throat> history will help you appreciate and also understand uh, where where all this is coming from. While I was offline between the last video and this video, I made some C++ code. All right, don't let it scare you. All right, but I made this cow. It's a class. Don't stress this part right now. And we have some public functions. Since it's C++, I can say function, but methods, whatever you want to call them. There's a moo and there's an eat grass. And you see here, there's no body on these functions. All right, if you're familiar with C++, then. This should go easy. If not, uh, let me explain a few things. There's no body. Right? These are called declarations. You can consider this metadata. There's no code in here. It's all just metadata. There's a class that exists somewhere, and it's cow. It has a couple of public functions that return void and take no arguments. One of them's called moo, and one of them's called eat grass. Now, the actual code in C++, we put in files we typically call CPP files or C++ files. I'm going to do new vertical tab group there so we can see the metadata is put in one file and this file is a text file it's, it's, it's not a dotnet assembly it's not anything it's just it's pure text and then over here we actually have the code and this is how you print in C++ we in moo I said let's print moo and drop an inline on the end and here's eat grass and, and we'll print num munch num munch that kind of thing and then instead of using uh, putting usings at the top of our files, we put these includes, which I won't even go into what these do. Uh, they basically do a bunch of copy and paste. All right, and then uh, whole there's a whole level of complexity here that that exists in C++ because it's built on C, and we're talking decades old. These languages are decades old, but still used and still respected because they give us that nice low-level control with the CPU. Anyway, yada yada yada. Here's code. Here's metadata, and I want to compile these two into a DLL so that I can consume them just the same way that we consumed our farm in C Sharp. So I save these files away in the same place I have the C Sharp code in me C Sharp code directory. That doesn't make sense that I'm saving C++ in such a folder, but I am. I am, and I can list the contents of the directory here, and you see... Oh, here, here's the stuff from the last video. We have me farm.dll, and we have main class CS. So these are the C sharp files right here. But we're going to ignore them for now because we have the CPP file and this header file. I want to create the DLL using these two. So let's do it. And this DLL is definitely not a .NET DLL with a bunch of metadata in it. When we create a DLL, it is native CPU code. If you remember. Let me draw it again. I've drawn it several times, but in C sharp, we write our C sharp. We run it through CSC, the C sharp compiler. That spits out the Microsoft intermediate language I've shown in several videos where there's metadata and still classes and all that stuff. But eventually, we have to get to something that the CPU can execute native instructions. All right, go watch my assembly programming playlist if you really want to get down low and see how this works. And that uh, process is done by the just-in-time compiler. We've seen a video on that. So this whole process is cool. Well, with C++, with unmanaged C++, meaning we're not targeting .NET, we have our, our CPP files. We can call them our C++ files. Or, uh, they're just text files. They're code files. I could name it whatever I wanted, I wanted to, but CPP or is the... Uh, the de facto standard. We run it through the CL compiler, the C++ compiler. CL is short for compile and link. And that generates native instructions. It skips this whole this whole step of .NET, missile, metadata, assembly, yada yada. We go native. And once we're native, the metadata in .NET, it, it sits at this level. Well, there, that level doesn't exist with C++. So metadata, as far as we're concerned, only exists at this level, and it's it's textual. Right? Down here, all that, the classes do not exist at the native level. Classes are gone. Right? Functions are still kind of there, but not really. They're procedures. But other than that, there's, there's no classes, there's no delegates, no properties, no nothing. This is lean, mean, raw stuff 
that the CPU can execute. Well, all right, I want to create a DLL anyway, because we can create DLLs using C++, and we can reference them and make libraries and that kind of thing. It, the only difference is it's all, it's all native. So we have our uh, CPP file. Okay, it has the code in there for the cow. We have the header file. Let, let's, let's, let's make this thing go. Compile and link slash LD. LD means create a DLL. I don't know why they did LD. Maybe link DLL. That might be it. Or maybe they like to spell DLL backwards and leave off a letter. I don't know. I don't know. Let's do my C++ dot CPP. That's this code file back here. It's the C++ compiler only really cares about the code, so we're just going to target it to the code file. And then this pound include. What this pound include actually does is copies all this code from the header file in here. So copy, paste. There you go. That's look how primitive and painful that is. But that's how we do it. That's that's what's going on there. Let me save all that and bring our command line back up. Hit enter. It crunches away. And look at this. Look at this. We have a DLL file. That's what I wanted. But then we have this lib file. Hmm. With .NET, we didn't need these libs. Everything was in the DLL. All the metadata was in the DLL. What's this lib thing about? Let me explain. Let's clear the screen. List the contents of the directory. And let me just point those out. We have the lib file. Ooh, and we have this OBJ file. By the way, we don't need this anymore. It's part of C++ compiling. And we also have our DLL. Well, the DLL has the native instructions. In this case, we're doing dynamic linking, not static linking. Go watch my videos on dynamic versus static linking. But in this case, we're doing dynamic linking, meaning the code is in the DLL file. The lib file tells the linker what is in here. So the lib is kind of like a metadata file for the linker. And you may think, Jamie, what's a linker? Well, hence again, more of the complexity is the C++. We, we pre-process, then we compile, then we link, and the link kind of connects all the dots. And hopefully you're starting to appreciate .NET, saying, you know, it just kind of all happens magically, because all that metadata is in the DLL, and the compiler takes care of everything for us. All right? Not in C++, though. We have this DLL, we have this lib, and oh, by the way, our metadata is actually still here in its textual form. And if we want to use this metadata, then we have to uh, bring this text, essentially bring this text that tells us what functions exist, but doesn't tell us what the implementation of those functions are. The implementation is sitting in this this code file back here we packed away into a DLL. So our metadata is purely text, and it only exists at the compiler level, not the native level. So let's uh, let's uh, actually use this this DLL we've created. You hopefully you notice I have this consumer C++ file back here, and let me I'm gonna bring this header file over there. I have consumer C++, and here's a main. And C++ programmers are probably freaking out because I have a void there. But I created this cow. And this is how we create objects. We don't say new in C++. Well, we can, but here I'm not saying new. I just say, hey, give me a cow. And cow moo, cow eat grass. Now, in C Sharp, remember when we were doing this, I said cow, cow gets new cow. And the compiler knew that I could say cow and not cower or something like that. It knows that there's a cow because it looks at the metadata information for this farm that we referenced. However, in C++, the only way the compiler can verify that this is a legitimate class, and we can create an instance of it, and there is a move function with a capital M and two O's, and it takes no parameters on. The only way the compiler can do it is by looking at this file here. And again, I say when, when we do pound and glued, all this does is say, hey, open up this header file and copy and paste the code. So here I'll just do it manually. Control A, C, paste it in there. And now the compiler can look and say, OK, there is a cow and there is a moo. And I'll just go on faith that uh, we'll see the code later. So I'll compile that. And we'll leave it up to the linker to make up for that. So, so there you go. Let's actually uh, compile this now and link it against our DLL that we created earlier in the video. So let me bring this up. And I'm going to say compile and link. The input file is consumer C++. And I want to link against my c++.lib. Lib is, is where the linker will look for the connections. So I say yes, go. Looks like it, it worked. We're just fine. Let me clear the screen. Looks like we have 
Consumer C++ .exe. That's what I'm looking for here. And let's run it. Consumer C++ .exe. Hit enter. Hey, look, our cow's doing his job. All right. So hopefully, if anything, you're lost. Okay. I kind of hope you're lost. <laughs> because this level of complexity, and we're only doing one file here. We're doing one cow. Can you imagine libraries of files? If you go watch my game engine programming playlist, I do all that in C++. And you'll see, holy smokes. If I want to add a library, I have these lib files, and I have these DLL files, and I have I have to link against that, and I have to run against, I have to link against the lib files, I have to run against the DLL files, and and I have to have these header files so the compiler knows that there's those classes and functions and objects exist. And oh, what a headache! Just give me .NET again. Give me a single file assembly. Hopefully, you can see why about 15 years ago people were raging like, ah, oh, one file. It's all in there. It's epic. Hopefully, hopefully you're really starting to appreciate it. If not, wow, you've made it a long way into the video. But there you go. I just want to have a little fun here. I'm going to erase. What am I going to erase? I'm going to erase my C++.dll. Erase my C++.dll. Oops. D. Oh, come on. Dll. And now, uh, when I try to execute my consumer exe, it's going to look for that dll and say, hey, uh, uh, there's some code in here. I know there's some code in here because I linked against it at compile time via the lib. I, I need that code, but we just deleted it. So watch what happens when I when I run this. I'm gonna say consumer c++.exe says, hey um, can't run my c++.dll is missing. Try reinstalling from the program to fix this. But you ever seen this error? You know, sometimes when your DLLs get mixed up or DLL hell. If you want, ooh, DLL hell. I should talk about DLL hell. I probably will, but if if your DLLs get messed up, then you'll see this error. It's like reinstall the program, and all of a sudden two programs are reinstalling all over each other. Ah, oh, it's bad. Okay.